The residents of this neighborhood have been making it clear that they will no longer tolerate streetwalkers on what some say is literally their front door. So what was the final, what was the final story? Well, I mean, there was there were a culmination of things. I mean, we had actually a John and a prostitute um, uh, doing a, an act in a driving car that hit and totaled one of the neighbors' cars here, which sounds bad, but it's actually that's one of the many types of things. I mean, I find condoms in my in my in front of my porch. Um, I can't work in my yard and in my garden without people slowing down and looking at me and you can tell that they think, you know, that maybe there's business to be had. So it's just became such a quality of life issue for all of us here that we felt like we didn't, we couldn't even sit out and enjoy our own neighborhood anymore um, without the crime and the just, you know, unpleasant have you, you know, seen, have you seen a decrease in uh, street We right? have, we have. I mean, I would definitely say since we put the signs up, we've seen a decrease. Um, although I will also say this morning, one of the regulars I haven't seen in two weeks, and I saw her this morning driving on my way to work, kind of walking her normal route. And I don't want to sound unsympathetic to these women because I know they have a lot of problems, but I also at the same time don't feel like we need to be the ones that are, you know, dealing with all of their problems right here. You know, this street has become really like prostitution highway. And for those of us who live here, it just became completely, un, you know, completely intolerable. And, and I hate to lose sympathy for, you know, the prostitutes who I also think are, you know, are, are victims to, to an extent. But, you know, we, we just can't tolerate this kind of stuff anymore. So, um, you've seen the signs up on Wickens, right? Yeah. All right. As, what, what does that really mean? Like, are people really out there? It says they're giving John's street um, license place numbers to the cops. Are they really doing that? Or? Um, from what I, from what I have heard, there are actually people that are, you know, driving around out there writing them down. and writing down the license plate numbers and like, uh, you know, if they're outside and they see a car pull over that they are taking license plate numbers. I know for a fact they are calling the police. That doesn't really matter because the good jobs ever get in trouble. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. I mean, I've read they, they towed your car and you got to get No. Do you want to know something? The Johns never get in trouble. If you get caught, they usually get let go and we go to jail. Well, I mean, I've, never, I've seen maybe a couple, I've heard about a couple. You know, most of the Johns get in trouble when they do the stings and have the um, cops with undercovers, you know, posing as prostitutes. And then in that, I believe, they tow your car and you have to go to a John class. And, yeah. You know, you're embarrassed completely. They scare them. I've seen them where they, like, surround them, you know, mm -hmm. real scary, like they're uh, yeah, a murderers. Yeah, like undercover. Yeah, they you treat know. you like you're murderers. But if, say, if me and neither of us are undercovers and they were to catch us, it, I heard about a girl coming out of the woods, and they, the, the John told the cop what happened. They let him go and took the girl yeah. for soliciting. You and know what I mean? That's normally what happens. If neither of us are cops, the John's going to get away, and I'm going to go to jail. Unless the cop's just really, uh, you know, strong about his beliefs that, like, the John is victimizing him. Yeah. So. Is he? Um, huh. I guess in a sense, yeah, I mean, depends on the of course. I mean, but we're victimizing ourselves too. I mean, yeah, we put ourselves out here by doing this, you know. Yeah. I mean, this might be a dumb question, Sue. So, I mean, why are you out here? I'm out here because I have a drug problem that, uh, you know, I had this completely out of hand. Mm -hmm. And this has unfortunately become the easier way to support it. Yeah. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's probably not one girl out here that can tell you that they don't do a drug. Yeah. I mean, you can pretty much look at No matter how, so since you have a drug law, no matter how much police is going to be out here, no matter, no matter how many police, no matter who's watching who, you're going to be doing this. Right, because at this point I don't have any other option. I have to uh, take care of myself. I mean, I'm, I, because of my drug problem, I'm homeless. So my, uh, you know, prostituting is my only way of surviving. I don't have any.
Well, yeah, yeah I mean, she does. But I'm saying as far as, like, these men out here yeah. or, you know, your fake boyfriends and all that, they're not helping you. We're you the say, ones that make the money. You You're say fake boyfriends, are you talking about pimps? No. I wouldn't call them pimps. I don't even think there's any real pimps in Cincinnati. No, there's a, you see most of these girls out here, we all have dudes that call themselves our boyfriends. They call them butter pimps. Yeah. I mean, they use drugs, <laughs> too. Yeah. They have addictions, too. It's not like they provide us with anything. There's no home. Yeah. There's no clothing. There's no nothing. A lot of them are just waiting for the money. Yeah, we don't hand... Well, no, I don't ever hand the money. We just share the, the profit. You know, the dope. <laughs> so. But there... To my knowledge, there's no place. You know, when I first came down here, there I had a pimp, you know. And a pimp isn't a bad thing if they're doing the right thing. You know, I lived in a house. I never stood on the street. I didn't know what it was like to stand on a corner and pick up a, a man. Like, mm -hmm. I had everything I wanted. And there, there ain't no pimps out here. No. So that's not like, really. No. Not ones that know what they're doing. <laughs> Crack cocaine has uh, really ruined everything. Yeah. <laughs> I think an addict, an active addiction is going to do whatever it takes to get. We do. Need. We move from like, the next thing so to the other. You're going to figure out another way to get it. My arm, you keep looking at it. <laughs> I pick, it's my nerves for being down here and all the bullshit I go through. I have a nervous habit now. Yeah, so, I mean, we're gonna find anything to do. So if John's were gone forever, we find something else to do, and then the police would have something else to bother us about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so if you wanted to stop this tonight, if you wanted to, what, what would be open to you? If you say, you know what, I'm tired of this, I'm gonna do something. I don't understand the question. You said, if you, tie, if you were tied, say, I don't want to, I don't want to, you said your goal in life was to be a prostitute. Right. So if you, if you say, you know what, I'm not going to be a prostitute anymore, and I want to just totally, I'm going to get off the streets, I'm going to stop doing drugs, what, what would you do then? if you want to do that this way? How would you want to do that? Yeah. Uh, if I knew that, I be standing yeah, here. It's not, everybody talks about it. It's not as easy as it sounds. I oh, just went, excuse me one second. I just went to a place the, the other day, and... There was no real rehab for me. No beds were open. It's not as easy as it sounds. There's waiting lists and fucking shit. They make you go through all this stuff just to get in there. And it ain't that easy when you're a heroin addict because, you know, by 12 hours from now, we'd be sick and back out here. It takes a lot of courage to actually, you know, walk in these places. And then if they don't accept you at that moment, like, your mind can change, you know, because you have this, like, inner struggle with yourself. I mean, nobody... I believe wakes up and, and wants to live like this. Yeah, but don't make it, don't believe that it's that easy to just go get into a rehab or something. Yeah, it's, it, not. it's not. So, I mean, okay, here's another question. Something that's always been on my mind, too. Now, you've been in, now you've been in jail before. Yeah. Both of you have. Actually, I've never served in jail. Never, but you have, right? Yeah. Did you clean out, did you, did you detox in jail? Yeah. So, after you detox and they let you go, what happened? Well, um, a few times I tried, I guess. I don't think I really gave it any real time. Because let me tell you, I've been using drugs since I was 13. Drugs of some sort, I smoked weed, you know, drank pop pills. So I have never developed any type of coping skills. My, my way of dealing with anything is, you know, drugs. So anything that, you know, occurs that I can't handle it, I, I get hot. That's how I handle it. Or, uh, change, you know, change, an addict really freaks out about change, you know, like, um, and then you get high, I mean, it's like, uh, it's, it's a catch-22, the, the cycle that you get hooked in is just absolutely, not the, the lifestyle and everything we live, we live, we don't feel like normal people now, you know what I mean, we don't feel like we fit into the real world. I don't know, if I go out to get a job or something, I'm not, I'm going to feel like a black sheep. So that's why we keep coming back to people who don't understand us and we come back out here. So it's just hard for us to live a normal life again because it, it's not normal anymore. Normal. You know what I mean? It's still up here, you know. It, this is normal. <laughs> this is our 9 to 5. And right. 5 to 9 and everything. <laughs> we work more than anybody in the yeah. work, workforce, you know. I never stop. I don't think anybody would choose this. I have a daughter. I have a family. I've completely given that up, them up, for a drug that makes me miserable, that has led me to 
you know, leading a life that has caused more trauma. I mean, I've been raped, robbed, stabbed, held hostage, you know, but I still come right back out here and stand on the street and, and get in the car. <laughs> and then, you know, for that final outcome of, what, 10 seconds of a high. <laughs> Or, you know, I do heroin too, so, you know, yeah. uh, sweet oblivion for a couple hours. Sitting there drooling with your mouth hanging over, but I mean, how sexy is that? That's what I paid for. Yeah. Huh. We can't help it. We can't think about anything else. I have two little kids, a three and a four year old, and I love them to death, but, you know, I can't, I really don't have nothing to give them no, no more. This is what I got to give. And the relationships that we build down here are our family now, so we depend on them. And this is, you just gotta, you gotta try to find a person in here to cling to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you're, you kind of, you become tainted yeah. after a while. And, um, they you don't understand you. And you're I mean, I've read articles where they compare this life to, uh, a life of war. Like, um, we have the same, uh, trauma. Um, that the men did fighting in Vietnam, like, were affected. Like, I have post-traumatic stress syndrome, you know. And as time goes on, I can see where that is affecting me more and more, you know. But I still stay here. Um, it's not just, cross, I'm addicted to drugs, prostitution, the streets. I mean, I'm addicted to the whole lifestyle. It's a much broader picture than just the addiction of drugs. Like, once you remove that, you have so many more aspects to deal with. Yeah. Um, and a lot of us have mental um, diagnosis that, uh, you know, are untreated and we self-medicate. I mean, I have seven different diagnoses. And I'm not saying, I'm saying, you know, sometimes they do that, <laughs> you know, just to say, like, this is what's wrong with the person, but my issues have always been there since my childhood. My mother was um, apologetic, like, I wish I would have, you know, uh, helped you when you were a child. Like, she has guilt. Yeah. Because, you know, back then, you didn't, you know, mentally ill people were outcasts. And, and I don't know, you, people were self-medicating. To cover up the pain or being numb. I mean, a lot of the things that we do, I mean, I can understand people not, you know, uh, wanting to be around it or, or looking at us like, what the hell is wrong with this person? Because they don't understand, but what they don't realize is I don't understand it either. What made a Catholic schoolgirl from the suburbs come to over the Bronx and uh, start smoking crack and shooting heroin? How would I even know how to survive down here? I was given everything as a child. But you know what? I mean, I, I, I at that point, had no other choice but to learn. The guy Survival of the fittest. And we're so people, by the way. I just want to put that out there. Yeah. Everybody uh, likes to pretend that we're not people anymore.